this video, we're going to see if calories is acting as a significant moderator between the exercise and weight loss variables. And we're going to use the Hayes process and we're going to write it up in APA formatting the results. Okay, so that's that's the main thrust of this video. So we're going to go to analyze, regression, process. And then what we're trying to predict is weight loss. That makes it the Y variable. Exercise is your predictor or your X variable. And calories is your suspected moderator. Click OK. Wait a minute. And remember, with the Hayes process, the variables cannot be over eight characters in length name-wise, which is kind of a pain in the butt. But this is this is what we're looking at. So W is the suspected moderator. Does calories moderate the relationship between exercise and weight? And wait for it. It's <laughs> a stats joke. The short answer is you go down to this. This, this is the interaction term. That little asterisk, the little star between. The X and the W, that's between the predictor variable and the suspected moderator. And if it's significant, then wahoo, it is a significant moderator. So that's part one. Now we're going to take this information and we're going to, and we're going to use it in the write-up. So hold on for that. I found this very handy dandy template online that will show you how to put this results into APA formatting. So I'm not going to read it up here, but I will. Basically, we're just going to cut and paste this and then put in our values. So from our table from above, a multiple regression analysis was conducted to investigate the moderating effect of calories. Calories is the moderator, suspected moderator, on the relationship between exercise, the, the predictor, and weight loss, the DV. Okay, calories was hypothesized to moderate the relationship between exercise and weight loss, and it would be stronger or weaker at different levels of calories. So our results were, and again, we just, I changed all the, the from the template, X's were the predictor, Y was the criterion variable, the Y variable, and Z was the suspected moderator. So X was exercise, Y was weight loss, and Z was calories. This, this is the number you have to report right here from the Hayes process. So let me show you where you get that number. And up to the table, Mabel. <laughs> so there's the outcome table, but it's this, it's this one. Okay. That little asterisk tells you that this is the moderator. And if it's significant, that means that, yes, you do have a significant moderation, which means that calories influences the relationship between exercise and weight loss. No surprises. Now, there's another place to look for this one. If you look at the interaction term on the on the big box up here, but be careful. The P is the is this one, right? It's 0 0.0177. They should agree, and they do. All right, so that's how you write it up. And give me a second. I'm going to get it set up, and I'm going to show you how to do a simple slopes analysis some teachers will want that when you prove a moderator they want a simple slopes analysis and i'll show you how to do that too so hold on time for a simple slope analysis now important some of your teachers won't want to see the simple slopes analysis some will so this is just a an add-on to make sure you're covered so how to do that is you go back to your data set and we're going to turn we're going to create a new variable that's the z-scores of these calories, right? So that's quite easy. We go to analyze, we go to descriptives, we go to descriptives again. We stick in calories. Calories. Hold on, let's make this smaller. Calories, calories. And you see that little box right there? It's going to create a new variable that is going to standardize each and every calorie score, right? Remember your old z-scores? And then we go back to the data set and we look it up. There it is right there. Boom. All right. So there's the z-scores. So now we're going to create a new variable that's going to put everybody into one of three groups. If they had a z-score less than negative one, that's going to be the first group. I'll put these in order here. Boom. Right. So anybody less than a negative one is going to be in your group one. And that's all the way down here. So you're going to have 23 people in your first group. Your second group is going to be between is going to be the group that has a z-score between negative one and positive one. 
So that's all the way here. This is your middle group, right? Let's go all the way to number one. And so you're going to have that many people in your group two. And then your group three is going to have a standard deviation of one or more. And we're going to, I'll show you how, what we're going to do here, but you got plenty in each group, so that's fine. So let's do this. We're going to transform. We're going to create a new variable. Recode into a different variable. And we want the z-scores. And then we're just going to say, I'm going to call it um, z-scores. Make it easy on us. Of calories. And I love my calories. Oh, yeah. So we're going to identify it as this. And so, so the lowest z-score all the way up to negative 1, right? So anything less than negative 1 is going to go into group 1. And I'm going to call them low, right? Um, low calories. And then from the highest all the way down to positive 1, we're going to name them 3. And I'm going to call them high calories, right? And then everybody else is going to get a two. Those are the guys that are the middle of the road group. Okay, so boom. So we created a new variable. And now we got to go back in and label those values, right? Bam. So what did I say? We're going to say, let's see, values. Boom, 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 boom. Right, one was low calories. Two was medium calories. And we could probably find cutoffs if you wanted to, but I don't want to. And the last one is me. Lots of calories. High calorie diet. You think this brain is easy to feed there? <laughs> okay, never mind. Boom. So now. We're going to run the simple slope analysis, and it looks like this. We, we open it up with a scatter plot. So we're going to run the weight exercise scatter plot, right? Does, right? Exercise, predict weight. Now we're going to break it down by the three groups, right? So we got low, medium, and high. That's that. So it's going to produce three lines. Let's get this up here so you can see it. It's going to put three different... Okay, you can't see it, but it's the OK button down here on the bottom. It's going to produce three separate lines. You'll notice the little blue circles. They're the low-calorie group, and I guess that's green. They should pick better colors. Green is the medium group, and red is the high group. So double-click on it. Bam. And we're going to put in multiple lines. Right? That's this one. It looks like a squid or something. Bam. Now, important... If it was not a moderator, right, if calories was not a moderator, these lines would be parallel. But looky, looky, looky. So your red line, that means your high-calorie group, the react, the relationship between exercise and weight loss is crap. In fact, there is no relationship, right? So it doesn't matter how much you exercise, your weight loss pretty much stays the same. <laughs> but for your low-calorie group, the more you exercise the more weight you're going to lose. And the same with the medium calories, right? It's not quite as strong as the low calories, but the medium calories, same thing. The more you exercise, the more weight you lose. So you would you would finish out this assignment by writing up the results in APA formatting. So after grouping the calories, that's the moderator, into three groups by their Z-scores, we went over that, so... Right, remember, group one is they have a z-score less than one. Group two is between negative one and positive one. And group three is greater than one, right? So low, medium, and high calories. And according to the graph below, let me let me go get that graph for you. Please hold. Now this graph, if you look at the if you look at the slopes, right? That's the coefficient in front of the x. So if you look at the blue line, it's pretty strong, right? 0.17. That's a pretty strong slope, right? That's the slope. And then for the green one, it's a little bit higher. It's 0.18. But for the red one, the E-4 means put 
four zeros in front of the two, which makes that point zero 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 two three five, which is close to zero, which means that there is no relationship. In other words, when exercises changes, weight loss just kind of stays flat. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't change. So you would, would put those in there too. But I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to copy that. Copy, copy. Boom. And I'm going to pasty, pasty. And then you would just write it up accordingly, right? So again, you could put the slopes in there. That's what the M equals is the slope. So again, the, co the, the amount of calories does in fact moderate the effect between exercise and weight loss. And I hope that helps. MGZ out.